Lakin as I heard Lakin's father speak. And he said this might not have happened if we had secure borders. Well, it happened because of Joe Biden's policies. It happened because we don't have secure borders. Her alleged murder was paroled by Joe Biden. One of two million people paroled by Joe Biden. How can you possibly begin to vet two million people when you bring them into this country, hundreds of thousands of them flown into the country? Besides being paroled, he was arrested in New York and released. Uh, there was a warrant out for his arrest in Atlanta. What the Lake and Riley Act would do is force local law enforcement to keep that person in custody, an Ill illegal alien that has been arrested should be kept in custody. Can you imagine, we now have one and a half million people in this country that have went through the entire immigration process and they've not been removed by Joe Biden. So we're seeing Lake and Riley's story played out day after day. Today, 300 Americans are going to die from fentanyl poisoning. In Kansas last year alone, law enforcement officers uh, were able to stop 200 pounds of fentanyl, enough to kill 40 million Americans. Kansas has 3 million people, but we, they were able to apprehend enough fentanyl to, to kill 40 million, enough to kill every Kansan 14 times. As the law enforcement officer said in our round table, we're not going to be able to arrest ourselves out of this situation. We need to secure the border. If our friends across the aisle were serious about securing the border, they would give us a vote on the Lake and Riley Act and force law enforcement to detain any illegal aliens who commit a crime. I stand beside Senator Budd today, hoping that we get that vote this week. Thank you. Uh, next we have Senator Kennedy. It, uh, it seems to me that uh, President Biden's State of the Union address notwithstanding, uh, the State of the Union today can best be seen in the grocery store and at the southern border. Um, in opening up the southern border, and that's clearly what President Biden and the Democratic Party has done, uh, he and they have clearly summoned spirits that they can't control. As best we can tell, about 9 million people for Nebraska's have come into the United States. And we do not have the slightest idea who they are. Um, I, think, I think in opening the border, part of the, uh, of the motivation by my Democratic colleagues was political. I think part of the motivation was and is based on uh, policy. Um, I think many, many members of the Democratic Party believe that vetting people at the southern border is racist. Most Americans don't agree with that. They think it's prudent. Um, they, 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 they don't hate immigrants. They don't hate foreign nationals. Most Americans see the southern border like they look at their front door, front door of their home. Uh, most Americans lock their front door at night. They don't lock their front door at night because they hate absolutely everybody on the outside. Most Americans lock their front door at night because they love the people on the inside, and they just want to know who's coming into and out of their home. They consider that to be prudent, um, not racist. Uh, the Riley Act is yet more, one more attempt by the Republican Party to uh, try to stem the chaos at the border. And make no mistake, the, uh, the border is chaotic by design. Um, the, the, the Democratic Party, led by President Biden, now clearly believes in no distinction between legal and illegal immigration. If, if uh, according to the Biden administration, if you are a, a Nigerian doctor or a German engineer and you want to come to the United States legally, 
and you've filled out all the forms and you've undergone the vetting and you're waiting patiently in line, you're a chump. You're a chump. Because on this administration um, believes there should be no distinction between legal and illegal immigration. The final point I want to make is that there's another provision in the Riley Act that you should pay very close attention to because it would be far-reaching. And that is this statute, if it becomes a statute, this bill, if it becomes a statute, would create a cause of action for a state, probably through its attorney general, that can prove damage to sue federal officials who do not enforce America's immigration laws. Thank you, Senator Kennedy. Senator Cornyn of Texas. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Well, we're gathered here today to honor the name and the life of Lake and Riley. Sadly, Lake is not the only casualty of the Biden border crisis. Several months ago, an 11 year old girl was found dead in her family's home in Pasadena, Texas, outside of Houston. The individual charged with her murder and sexually assaulting her entered the United States illegally last year and was released to sponsors in Louisiana. That's just one other example of countless tragedies after tragedies after tragedies that families have had to deal with because President Biden does not believe in enforcing the law. The only conclusion I've reached is he simply doesn't care. He doesn't care about the loss of Lake and Riley. He doesn't care about the loss of this 11 year old girl from Pasadena, Texas. And so it's up to us to make sure that the status quo changes. And frankly, this is one step in that direction. I wanna thank Senator Budd for uh, leading this effort today. But coming from Texas with a 1,200 mile common border with Mexico, we have been on the front lines of this tsunami of humanity coming across and the drugs that Senator Marshall mentioned that took the life of 108,000 Americans last year. And then there's the 300,000 unaccompanied children that have been placed with, actually I think it's closer to 400,000 now, children, minor children placed with sponsors in the interior of the United States and the Biden administration says it's not their responsibility to determine whether they're going to school, whether they're getting the health care that they need, whether they're being trafficked for sex or being forced into involuntary labor. Secretary Becerra said as much last week at a hearing before the Senate Finance Committee. The American people will be able to vote on this issue in November. This will be one of the most important, if not the most important issue that the American people will be deciding in November, not just in the vote for the next president of the United States, but the vote on who controls the majority of the United States Senate and the House of Representatives. So we're here to honor the name and to grieve with the family of Lake and Riley. But the best thing that can come out of this terrible tragedy is for some good to occur, and that will be to change the status quo and to change the people who are currently responsible for the Biden border crisis. Thank you, Senator Cornyn. Um, Senator Ricketts, Nebraska. Thank you, Senator Bud. Again, our condolences to Lake and Riley's family on this horrible and senseless tragedy. President Biden's open border policies have led to humanitarian and national security crisis at our southern border. He is responsible for the human trafficking, the sex trafficking, the child trafficking, the drug trafficking that is going on there. And now we see the results of his illegal use of parole to parole in last year, 1.2 million people into this country. Jose Ibarra, who is alleged to have committed this crime, was one of the illegal immigrants 
that was paroled into this country in September of 2022. He went to New York because once you're inside the country, you can move around freely. That makes every state a border state. And in New York, he was picked up for child endangerment, not detained. He went to Georgia, picked up for shoplifting, not detained. When people come to our border and continue to break our laws, they must be held accountable. We must do better. This tragedy could have been avoided if President Biden didn't have an open border policy. This tragedy could have been avoided if ICE had detained Jose Ibarra. But time after time, he was let go. The Lake and Riley Act would require officials to detain illegal immigrants who break the law through theft or burglary and have ICE deal with them. They need to be held accountable. They continue to break our laws and disrespect our laws. The Lake and Riley Act will help address that injustice. The solution that we need here is to be able to pass this bill and then ultimately have President Biden secure the border. He has the tools to do that today. He chooses not to. He chooses not to do this. The 9 million people who have tried to get into this country, that's bigger than the population of New York City, where Jose Barra was originally arrested. Think about that. That's how many people have attempted to get into this country in the last three years since Joe Biden opened our borders. These tragedies will continue to happen as long as Joe Biden fails to do his duty and secure our border. We must demand action. Thank you. I thank my colleagues. We've got uh, two attorneys, a former governor and a physician. So we're, uh, with that, we're ready to take a few questions. No. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Well, if you look at the uh, content of it, we would hope all of them would support it. But if you look at the reality, um, that's not our expectation, but some. And we think it is germane, so we hope that it would be at 50 votes. That's our argument. Thank you. Yeah. Question. Uh, where does the border uh, pass with 200,000 people go? Um, I had not heard about that number, but um, many times, as you know, um, people coming to the country claiming asylum, there's an initial screening at the border uh, called a credible fear screening, but then people are generally given a notice to appear at a future immigration court hearing. In some places like New York, it's been reported that it could be as long as 10 years before they actually would appear in front of an immigration judge. But in many cases, because the volume of people coming across was so great, they were just given, they were just told to report to the local Immigration and Customs Inform Enforcement Office in wherever it is they were going. And there was no follow-up or accountability to make sure they actually showed up. Um, but I have no doubt, uh, out of the nine million or so uh, illegal Im immigrants that we've seen come across the border during the Biden administration, that there have been mistakes made, and uh, those will have to be hashed out uh, at the courts. But um, this is all entirely preventable, as was Lake and Riley's death, if Joe Biden would simply just enforce the law. Can you repeat what you just said? Uh, the nonpartisan group that you have had on the line to enforce the border that the Biden administration has not done enough to do so, and they're not going to do that. Let's take a break in the questions. We'll come right back to them. We're honored to have both senators from Texas here, and if I could be uh, joined by Senator Ted Cruz.
Thank you, and I thank my colleagues for holding this press conference. Lake and Riley should still be alive. The reason that she is not alive is because of Joe Biden's open borders and because of the Democrats' policies refusing to secure our border. There is a simple but for causation. The murderer took the life of that 22-year-old beautiful young woman, a nursing student in Georgia out jogging. We had him in custody. He was apprehended in El Paso, crossing illegally from Venezuela. Had Joe Biden simply followed the law, what would have happened is that murderer would have been put on a plane, flown back to Venezuela, and Lake and Riley would still be alive. But the Biden administration decided their political agenda was more important than protecting the lives of American citizens, and so they let the murderer go. But that wasn't the last stop of the failures that unfolded. The murderer went from El Paso to New York City, where he was arrested once again, this time for endangering the safety of a child. Once again, Lake and Riley's life could have been saved, but New York City, unfortunately, is a sanctuary city where Democrats refused to enforce the law, so they let the murderer go. Had New York City put him in jail, that murderer would not have been in Georgia to beat Lake and Riley to death. But New York City let him go once again. This revolving door happens over and over again, and I have to say just how indefensible the Biden administration's policies on the border are was laid bare during the State of the Union, where in his prepared remarks, President Biden did not plan to say a word about Lake and Riley. And then in response to heckling, he did address her. He got her name wrong. And here was Joe Biden's defense. He said she was killed by a, quote, illegal. And he said, well, legals kill people, too. I want you to understand what the President of the United States is saying. Because there are murderers in America, it's perfectly okay for him to continue releasing more murderers into America. That is asinine. That makes utterly no sense. And by the way, the insult was compounded where the next day, what did Joe Biden do? He didn't apologize to Lake and Riley's parents. He didn't take responsibility that his policies released the murderer that took their daughter's life. He didn't do any of that. Instead, he apologized for using the word illegals. Because to this White House, it's more important to genuflect before the American Politburo of language than it is to actually protect American citizens. Listen, the Lake and Riley Act is simple common sense legislation. It passed the House with a large bipartisan majority. The Senate ought to take it up and pass it as well, although I have to say I have complete confidence that Chuck Schumer and the Senate Democrats have no interest in doing so because the sad priority of this White House and of the Senate Democrats is they put illegal aliens and criminals consistently higher on the priority list than protecting the lives of American citizens and over and over again, we see more and more Americans losing their lives as a, as a result. Thank you, Senator. I think you had uh, one more question. Yeah, uh, you said obviously uh, you would watch this. Multiple conversations with those who would support it being in the package. That's the conversations that we've had. Yeah. Maybe last question. I'm a father of two daughters, um, and so I can't imagine the pain that he's going through. Um, and this is not about politicizing his daughter's name. This is about remembering her, and this is about preventing tragedies like this from ever happening again. Thank you all very much. Yeah.